my bike to load it on the boat. Okay, so I am on the I am on the ferry now and we are about to embark to Cumberland Island National Seashore. So in order to get on this ferry, I had to uh, several weeks ago I went online and made a reservation it cost um, I think $50 total I had to pay 10 extra dollars to bring my bike and then I had to pay $10 for a national park entrance so all together for one person over here at $60 I just well, I just got on the island and I'm headed to Stafford House or something like that and what impressed me the most or what really got my attention are these oak trees this is immediately as I get on the island this is like the first thing I see okay so look at this so I do have my electric bike here it is amazing it is amazing I should be able to cover a lot of ground on this bike. One thing though, there is some kind of a, a wild hog hunt here on the island and you can only go so far north. So I'm not sure exactly where I will be stopped. They said that I could go as far north as Stafford House. So that's what we're gonna go try to find. this island they have a hundred and fifty to two hundred feral horses This is the Stafford Cemetery. Robert Stafford. Looks like he died 1877. Thomas Hutchinson, golf professional an eldest son, a couple of people, born 1877, died 1900. Look 
at the what this wall is made of. Is this oyster shells? Wow. So over here to the right, I think this is the Stafford house. I actually had to turn around because I went too far. There are quite a few private residences on this island. It's pretty amazing. Well, that's the Stafford House. It says Stafford right there on the gate. Oh, there's a couple of more wild horses. Those are different color horses than what I saw before. Those are dark brown and almost a black. Look at this. I'm riding my bike and two armadillos, he came right up to my bike. Jesus. I, I thought he was gonna bite me or something. There's one over there. And then this one. Right here, he came right up to my foot. This little dirt road is supposed to lead to Stafford Beach. So then I'll take a right and head back towards the docks, I think. As typical, I am lost and I am pushing my electric bike along this obviously pedestrian only trail. So, oh Lord, hopefully the beach is up here. Look what I have found. Thank God that I can walk this electric bike Use my throttle and give it a little bit of power through the sand. Oh boy, look at this. Once I get to the hard pack sand, I think I can ride my bike again. Look at this. So, this is a national seashore. So Cumberland Island is 18 miles long and about three miles wide. Carnegie's lived here in the late 1800s. We're going to go see their, uh, the ruins of their home um, in a few minutes, hopefully. We've been on the north end of the island where we cannot go visit right now, but um, it's the first African Baptist church. It was built in 1893, and actually John Kennedy Jr. married uh, Kessel Carolyn Bissett there. And being able 
able to ride an electric bike along this beach. Oh my gosh. This was very likely worth the cost of this electric bike right here. What a great experience. snow in Florida. <laughs> the way the sand washes over the beach is truly beautiful. So I'm on this stretch for several miles. off of the beach and I took it and I just pushed my bike through that and now I'm going back to the center of the island I'm not sure exactly where in the center of the island I'm gonna end up this is Grayfield Road this is a private road I didn't know it until after I had gone through all that sand and there was no way I'm going back through all that sand so I'll just get off of this road as quickly as I can. This is the Carnegie Family Cemetery. It's private, you can't go in there. Oh, and we're gonna go check out Dungeness. It's the old ruins of the Carnegies. Apparently, a long time ago, the year will be disclosed down here I'm sure but they owned most of this island and this home uh, they lived in and it, it was burned and the ruins are still there but the Carnegies at one time were the richest or one of the richest families in the country I guess they spent a lot of time here I can see why sorry about all the rattling on my bike. It's my tripod beating against the basket. Oh, look. There's my bike. I'm the only one here.
This was the old garden house built in 1896. For the Carnegies. This is a great shot of the rear of this old mansion. And then it overlooked this looks like a tidal area. I bet if you were up higher you could see the, the water. Buddy. <laughs> I'm gonna sit here at this picnic table and have a little snack while I get to look at this beautiful old mansion. I think they said that this mansion had like 53 rooms in it at one time. And you know, I think I also read that this was built by a Revolutionary War hero. And he died and his wife married the children's tutor. And you know, I guess their outside handyman. And when they both died, she was buried next to her original husband, the one that built this house. And I don't think there was any marker put on the second husband's grave. Kind of interesting story. And their graveyard is here somewhere. I think it may have been in the, the Carnegie's private one. I'm not sure I saw it on a video. The graveyard is in here. I didn't see it today. I'm having a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And it's delicious. I haven't eaten anything all day. You know, they have a tour that you can take of this island. And I would have done it, but it's about six hours long. And I just really wasn't interested in being tied to somebody like that for so long. But it is available. It's probably fascinating. So this is Lucy Coleman, daughter of an industrialist who was no stranger to business when she married Thomas Carnegie. Hmm. And that's her. This was her house. Wow. You are one rich woman. Lucy's husband, Tom Carnegie, and his older brother founded an iron and steel conglomerate in Pittsburgh. I guess that's how they got their money. After visiting the island, she was captivated and resolved to make it her winter home. So over five years, in 1881 and 1886, they purchased most of the island. He died in 1886, leaving Lucy a widow at age 40 and the mother of nine children. they have
have a gaggle of turkeys. Let's see how close they'll let me get to them. Dungeness Dock and this river trail right here I believe is going to take me back to where I need to be in 30 minutes. Uh, we have lots of fresh water here all over the island. It might not be big ponds or lakes but it's fresh water and all these animals know where to get their fresh water at. It might not seem huge to us but they, they figured out the streams they figured out where our, our buildings have lots of broken pipes. If no one's living in the building and the pipe is broken and there's no plans for anyone to live in the building, we're not going to fix the pipe. But the advantage is that's fresh water coming up from the aquifer. The animals are drinking where the broken pipes are. Like, did anyone see the wild turkeys drink at the spigots? Down around Dungeness. You have, we have spigot down there that keeps leaking, but the animals have learned that that's an, an easy way to get fresh water. It works. We're good with it. about to depart to go back to the mainland and there is the island Restaurant and a great treat after a hard day out at Cumberland Island. 